audience, and I'm going for offense straight away. It is time to get into our top eight match between Aurelian Sula and Justin Burns for this game number one. Aurelian has the Urshifu as well as the Grim Snarl, and Justin right away with his Iron Hands and Ice Rider Calyrex. This Urshifu set I feel like is tailor made to be strong into a lot of these Ice Rider Calyrex matchups. The Taunt and Safety Goggles ability, or uh, uh, attack and item, or rather, are really strong into a Pokemon like this because Calyrex it is resisted. The Glacial Lance coming out from that Calyrex. It has a pretty strong defense stat regardless, and also the Taunt can prevent Calyrex from going for those Trick Rooms to set up the speed for it to be attacking first. Also, of course, threatening big damage with the Close Combat and Surging Strikes like we're used to. While we see a lot of Ice Rider Calyrexes get led in order to hopefully set up the Trick Room or even just kind of start to wail away at some damage, Justin is going to preserve that Ice Rider for it later. We see a Reflect come out from this Grim Star with the Light Clay that's going to be sticking around for quite some time. But as the Rapid Strikes from this Rapid Strike Urshifu land into the Iron Hands, well, that is going to be quite a substantial amount of damage. Pretty lucky there that you're going to be able to land some of that down as the Iron Hands takes a little bit of that back. It is a nice chunk of damage there, not insignificant into the Iron Hands, especially when you consider that the Assault Vest is there to help mitigate damage from the Choice Specs Terrapagos that Aurelian is packing. Reflect there means that that Drain Punch does not too much damage at all, and Iron Hands isn't able to recover too much of its HP. Uh, also, luckily for Aurelia, no Electric type attack coming into that slot, which could have been a much bigger threat into the Searching Field. Justin was thinking about it as yeah. well, so uh, the Wild Charge would have been a fantastic option to see there. But it's a quick lock-in, as now this Urshifu is ready to go with this Water Terrestrialization. Those Surging Strikes are going to be even more powerful. And you saw how much damage that was able to do to the Iron Hands before. This is going to be close, but it should be enough. Oh, it's going to be so close. This might be a oh, close no. call. 3 HP, not enough to take the KO, but we did not see Grimmsnarl go for a prankster move. Foul play into the Iron Hands is able to pick up that little bit of damage, and the Iron Hands goes down. Big knockout here for oh, Aurelian, no. and the Pollen Puff into the side would have hoped to be able to get rid of some of that damage this Iron Hands has taken. It's supposed to be a tank in a matchup like this. Incineroar the Worn Out is a really funny title there. <laughs> Clearly Incineroar has seen a lot of battles and it's just, just tired. Uh, Justin, please give him a break, but not until after this match. And hopefully after a couple more matches, if you are Justin, that safety goggles and Terra Water of Urshifu already proving to be a big deal here because Amoongus was not able to redirect that Surging Strikes and the boosted damage from Terrestrialization was enough for that KO in conjunction with Foul Play. Oh, well the Foul Play is going to hit into the Amoongus as uh, Amoongus is not going to fall for the safety goggles on the other side. So this Grimmsnarl is going to get put to sleep. One of the nice things about being able to have a Pokemon that doesn't have a uh, Prankster utility. True, no Prankster utility left in this game. The issue now is that Safety Goggles Urshifu is still threatening some really big damage into the Incineroar on Justin's side. But the saving grace here is that Justin's Incineroar is not the Ghost Trastalization we often see. It's actually water. Water will allow it to resist the Surging Strikes and not just make them neutral because the Ghost Typing that often people use to dodge damage from something like a Close Combat or Body Press is neutral to water instead. Before that, though, it's going to be a switch in of the Chiyu. So Grimstar is going to go take a nap in its Pokeball instead. The Incineroar taking the Water Terra will absolutely feel much better sitting yeah. in front of this Urshifu. But for how long? We don't know what Aurelian's fourth and final Pokemon is going to be in the back. Mm. As the taunt from this Urshifu, yet another one of those tech moves that this Urshifu is packing, going to help shut off this Amoongus's utility because it's carrying the Covert Cloak, not the Mental Herb. No Spore coming through here. And we do see Justin is trying to go for that combination knock off Spore play that trainers have opted for to get rid of safety goggles before Amoongus can Spore. And I love that Chiyu swap because now the Chiyu is threatening a lot of damage into this Amoongus if not just a straight up one hit KO. And if you swap out Amoongus trying to take, you're trying to let something else take a fire type, we know that the fourth Pokemon is the Ice Rider. You really can't switch your Ice Rider in on Heat Wave and especially not Overheat. And now Justin's in a really tough spot because this Urshifu set is proving so effective for Aurelian in this match. <sighs> tough position right now. The Heat Wave coming through will be a knockout onto the Amoongus. And Cineroar 
not too worse for wear after an attack like that. But Justin is down to his final two Pokemon in this first game. With the taunt into the Incineroar as well, that means this Incineroar is no longer able to go for taunts itself or this party shot, but knock off. So sad after that safety goggles has already fallen off that Urshifu. It's a really smart taunt. It prevents any kind of parting shots from that Incineroar, which would have allowed it to not only lower the attack or special attack of either of Aurelian's Pokemon, but pivot out. The Calyrex comes into that slot, and then Incineroar takes the place of the fallen Amoongus. The Pokemon count stays the same, but Incineroar has Fake Out available, and of course, an Intimidate is thrown down. Really, really tough position here for Justin because Aurelian still has all four of their Pokemon, not even revealing their four yet, assuming the Trapagos, but this Chiyu with its Focus Sash has to take at least two attacks to be knocked out. Oh, the Dark Pulse, it's so close to being a one-hit knockout, but even if that's not going to be enough to get the job done, these Searching Strikes for sure will. One is all it takes to put this Ice Rider Calyrex back to the stables and leave this Incineroar all by its lonesome. That's why it's so weary. It's going to do this <laughs> exactly. all itself right yeah. now in this game. Interestingly enough, just like our last match, in top eight. These two players did face off in Swiss in the very final round of Swiss. So the last match they actually played was against each other and Justin came out on top. But Aurelian has taken that matchup knowledge, possibly even knowing, you know, if, even if I lose this match, I will probably get another chance to play in top eight. Possibly didn't show all of their tricks in that match to save information for this top eight match. And so far, whether or not that's the case, Aurelian is up a game. Well, they both had fantastic records. Of course. You know, 13 and two, Justin was locked in yeah. for a spot. Aurelian as well, probably very high resistance, knowing that that loss could potentially be to a player like Justin Burns. So, yeah, of course, you have to think about that knowledge preservation, maybe speed interactions, maybe just damage, or how you even want to try to approach a matchup like this. The beginning of this game was so well played from Aurelian too. It put them up so much just at the start of the game that it became very difficult for Justin to come back because the best thing Justin had to handle this Urshifu was that Iron Hands, and immediately it was just knocked out by the combination of those two Surging Strikes and the very last foul play from that Grim Snarl. And after that, it was just kind of a matter of time. Aurelian had all the tools they needed to deal with this Amoongus, specifically that Taunt Safety Goggles Urshifu coming in super, super clutch. It's such a tough call, though, I think, for Justin to make in that position because it's so tempting to just go for a wild charge. True. And if you do that and you hit into something like a detect or a switch, why not necessarily go the way that you want it to? Even with the reflect that the Grimmsnarl was able to set up, a wild charge probably not even enough to come close to a KO thanks to Urshifu actually having some pretty nice natural defense, and especially in a, in a matchup like this where you're using this Urshifu to have a strong matchup into the Ice Riders, probably even trained to be a little bit bulky on that end too. So you don't even need, you don't have to focus Ash to, to keep yourself safe. You don't have something like a Mystic Water where you want to maximize that damage output. So an Urshifu Tailor Mage for this matchup immediately hits the field once again next to that Grim Snarl, and we have the Iron Hands and the Calyrex for Justin. Just a run back at the leads we saw in game number one, so both players very comfortable with the game plans they want to execute. This Grim Snarl in a great spot once again. If Reflect goes up, that is neutering the damage from both the Iron Hands and the Calyrex in this matchup, which is really something you don't have, really don't want to deal with, but you also don't really have a way to stop. Fake out into the Urshifu, though, does stop it for at least one turn. Again, kind of seeing a run back of that turn number one, but a big difference here is that this Ice Rider Calyrex is just gonna go right out on the offensive. This Glacial Lance doing a good amount of chip into both. You talk about the bulk on this Urshifu, well, that's a crit. That's certainly gonna help. That is a really big critical hit, going straight through that Reflect and chunking this Urshifu down very quickly. I think one thing that's also really nice about this Grim Snarl that Aurelian is running, a lot of trainers opt for Spirit Break as their attack of choice, and a little extra utility with that special attack drop but foul play is what Aurelian is running, which heavily, heavily threatens the Calyrex on Justin's side. It is super effective. Calyrex has a very high attack stat, and Grimmsnarl still benefits from the same type of attack bonus as it is a dark type move. Ha, huh. yeah, the attack stat's pretty enormous. Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, that's not something that you are going to take lightly, which is why Justin's gonna lock in a protect here in case that is something that he is worried about.
But how is the rest of this turn going to play out? Because you can't protect yourself from an Urshifu. At the very least, though, you know you're not going to be taking too much damage thanks to the natural bulk of this Calyrex, and this Protect can still save you from this Grim Snarl. It can save you from Grim Snarl. Thankfully, the foul play will be thrown into Protect here, and Calyrex will stick around at least one more turn. Iron Hands gets the chance to attack unhindered, and Volt Switch goes not into the Urshifu for a possible KO, but into the Grim Snarl instead, wanting to preserve the momentum for Justin only. If the Urshifu gets knocked out there, there could be a chance for Aurelian to bring in something that might help out a lot. But Ditto comes in, not Ooh. something we saw in game one, and Justin will now have his very own Urshifu. Yeah. With a Choice Scarf too, you can assure that you're going to be faster. And yes. so a great way for you to be able to ensure a KO here. This Calyrex, this, I mean, this Grim Snarl, you don't have to worry too much about this Grim Snarl actually getting the foul play into you before you're able to fire off an attack. Yep. But regardless, Justin, going to preserve that Ice Rider, it's still so important in this matchup. So you're going to allow Iron Hands to take these hits instead. Iron Hands would love to take a foul play. It is not very effective into that fighting type. Ooh. But Thunder Wave coming through here will paralyze the Ditto for the remainder of this game and negate the speed boost from that Choice Scarf. Close combat into the Iron Hands does just under half HP, and we will get to see if Justin's Urshifu gets to attack. Ah, that's going to be the big key here, right? It does, though, with the Surging Strikes into the Grim Snarl, Three hits is plenty to get the KO onto it, and in fact, just make it two. And Aurelian is going to have to bring in another Pokemon into that slot. The nice benefit of the Surging Strikes is that it, of course, bypasses the damage reduction from the Reflect set up by that Grim Snarl on the first turn of the game. Aurelian will have to reveal their third Pokemon here, and it's going to be the Trapagos. We did not get to see it yet in the first game of this match. But the Iron Hands taking the close combat on the Switch means that it is much more vulnerable to this Trapagos. A combination of close combat or our Surging Strikes and a possible Choice Specs Terra Starstorm could knock it out. The Ditto has to worry about being paralyzed and slower than both of Aurelian's Pokemon. Justin does thankfully have Fake Out support here from the Iron Hands, but you can't Fake Out two Pokemon at once. No, but you can Fake Out the Terrapagos and break the Terra Shell. Correct. Because it's Choice Specs, you know it has to attack on this turn or Switch Out. So you are able to ensure just a little bit of damage as long as this Urshifu <laughs> actually gets a chance to attack. For starters, the Fake Out will break the Terra Shell on this Terrapagos, and it's the close combat. So this Iron Hands is able to stick around. Feels good to know that you're also going to be able to tank that hit and see another defense drop onto this Urshifu. On the oh, other side, no. with the Paralysis, the Thunder Wave. That's so important. It's really important and a really tough break for Justin here. Thanks to that Thunder Wave, the Urshifu will be attacking after both the Urshifu and the Trapagos on Aurelian's side of the field. A Choice Specs Terra Star Storm, more than enough to deal 17 damage to this Iron Hands. So a combination of Close Combat and Terra Star Storm into that Ditto slot, which is, which is now Justin's <laughs> fake Urshifu, let's say, should be enough damage for another big KO here. Really tough break because an attack from that Urshifu could have been a, a big deal of a difference maker. The minus two defense on Aurelian's Urshifu could have been enough to let it knock out, get knocked out by the Surging Strikes. Well, Iron Hands, it's got to pivot out here. This Calyrex now going to come in and take its place. But you know that this Terrapagos is on the other side. It's going to be faster than this Urshifu. And there's also Terrestrialization available for either this Urshifu or this Terrapagos. But you got to assume this Terrapagos is ready to go all out on the offensive with something like this Terra Star Storm. And we'll see if Justin matched the Terrestrialization with his Ditto. It is, of course, the Terra Ghost Ditto, which if the Urshifu goes for close combat, it could have dodged, but close combat straight into Justin's Ditto, copying that Urshifu. But Aurelian's Urshifu saying, I'm the big deal here. Terra Star Storm coming out. Thanks to the Terrestrialization is now a spread move. A spread stellar type move will do big damage. It will, and that's going to be playing to get the knockout onto this Ditto after all of that damage it just took. And this Ice Rider Calyrex does not have too much more health on it either. That Thunder Wave has been so important. Not only has it been able to deny an attack, but it also made it slower than this Trapagos. We're also going to have to see whether or not the Trapagos on Aurelian's side is able to withstand a close combat. If that is the case, it seems like this match is simply just over. Trapagos needs to be knocked out before it can fire off another big Terra Star Storm because it's, it's a huge threat right now. It does tons of damage with that Choice Specs. And you have to wonder if it's trained to be bulky enough to survive a close combat from this no-boosting item Urshifu. But it makes sense to try to get rid of this other Urshifu first. You have to get it out of here. You know it's been on the field for way too long. 
And you're also hoping it wasn't going to try to go for something like a Sucker Punch right. into your Ice Rider. Unfortunately, though, that means that this Ice Rider is going to get knocked out to this stellar Terra Star Storm. And as Urshifu has that Focus Sash, at the very least, shouldn't need of it to actually hang on through that attack. You get the Iron Hands back in, you have Fake Out, but you got one more shot here if you're Justin. And unfortunately, Chi Yu is the Pokemon of choice for Aurelian as well. It might come down to Heat Wave accuracy here, folks, because that Heat Wave is 90% accurate. We're not going to be well, relying on that too much, are we? But of course, at the same time, Chi Yu has Dark Pulse. It has a single target attack. It's 100% effective, 100% accurate. You have only one fake out for the rest of this game, and you can't fake out both Chi Yu and Terrapagos. But that's why you go for the fake out into the Chi Yu now, stop it from attacking, so that this Urshifu has a chance to actually get this close combat, but can it actually knock oh, it out? Oh, not even and close. It's not close at all. Aurelian Sula, Terrapagos survives the close combat, will be able to fire off one more attack. And with this Terra Star Storm into both of these low HP targets, the Iron Hands, the Urshifu, just not going to be enough here for Justin. And Aurelian Sula 2-0 gets to move on to the top four. Aurelian makes the skies descend onto Justin's final two Pokemon. And unfortunately, Justin will be knocked out. 